Good morning. We have a uh, Valor essential oil in the diffuser today. And our Sunday oil scope will be about Valor because it's actually in stock. Um, so we'll we'll do this and then we'll do a scope on Valor because it's awesome sauce. Good morning, good morning. We're going to start big magic. Let's Oh my gosh, Michelle, once you're hooked, you get, you'll end up with a diffuser in every single room. We have it. well, we, you know, we're not a good example because we don't have many rooms, but even Morgan, who's not as into the oils as she should be, uh, she has a diffuser in every room. You just, you just got to have them in every room. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah, we love our diffusers. Hey, uh, in case you want to buy a premium starter kit, they are 10% off this month. And for new people, hi, Deb. Nice to see you. Um, and so that's for new signups. You can save 10% on your kit, which is nearly 20 bucks. And then um, if you buy a second kit because you like to hoard things and you want a diffuser in every room, they are, they're 10% off for... Um, current people, right? Yes. We love our young living. <gasps> Yay! Oh, good. Okay. 10% off premium starter kits in February. I think so. Catherine, will you correct me if I'm wrong? Isn't it 10% off for everybody? Oh, sure, Nina. Every oil addict has a secret stash, a not-so-secret stash of um, bottles of oil. And Valor is a oil that gets hoarded. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, starts, are you Bernice? Shh, don't tell everybody. Valor's in stock. Yes, on everything except... Yay, I remembered your name. <laughs> I wrote your I wrote your handle down and your name next to it the other day. So even the Aria is 10% off and I don't have I don't have that one cuz it's super pricey. Okay, my name's Michelle Wolf. You can find me at caddyshackdesigns.com. I will do a oil scope right after this one. Um, Sundays we do a, an oil scope and this Sunday we will be talking, yeah, a fancy one. I don't even know what it looks like. Uh, we'll be talking about Valor, but first we're going to talk about Big Magic because that's our new book. We're going to do Big Magic and then on alternate days we'll stay with our Tao Te Ching Byron Katie study. This is the book we're starting today. This is all about creative living. Oh my God, Valor, right? It's in stock. So, I had a bunch of names popped in. Hi, 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 hi. Yes. So, to me, Elizabeth Gilbert does a great job of writing about maple-based glass dome nature sounds, if you want, in the aria. Hi, D. Yes, thank you. That would be great. Thank you. Okay, the link, if you're on the computer messing around while we're doing this, caddyshackdesigns.com, up at the top, you'll see a tab that says YL Essential Oils. That's my link. Thank you. Um, if you want to sign up through me, and you'll get tons of resources and tons of education, but we'll talk about that next. Let's talk about this first. I could talk about those stinking oils all day long. Valor is important because guess what? Valor goes with this chapter, or uh, this first section of the book. It's called Sometimes Liquid Courage. So we're starting in section one. Oh, I was saying that Elizabeth Gilbert does a good job in this book of helping us to understand that creativity comes from the divine through us. Um, people say, oh, I'm not creative, I'm not creative, I don't do anything. Well, if you're alive and you are sucking air, you can find creativity, but it does involve opening yourself up to the mystery. The great mysteries of life, yes. 
The more open you are to the great mystery of life, the great mystery that is life, the more powerful your creativity will be. And your creativity may not be painting or drawing or even crocheting. Uh, it might be organizing. It might be raising children. It might be um, being the best person in your job to organize files. Creativity is not, um, it might be talking. <laughs> Creativity isn't limited to uh, a media that you like art, what we would call art. People get stuck on that. Like if you're raising children, you're creative. When you're figuring out a way to get them in the car seat without punching you in the face and you do it, that's creativity. Because Ashlyn has got a mean right hook. Yeah. Hi, Kim. Okay, let's start. Courage. Harness your courage. After this, we'll talk about valor, which is liquid courage. Hi, yeah, hey! Look at all our live people. Uber creative to raise children. Julia! Are you ready? It takes courage because as creativity is moving through you, you feel the presence of the other, the uh, beautiful, divine, beloved other. Hi, happy Sunday. Sometimes that's scary for people. So sometimes people avoid creativity because they don't like it, that feeling when you really get in the flow and you feel like something else has taken over you, but it's not something else. It's you. You're just not used to it. Once upon a time. Story time now. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, everybody. Once upon a time, there was a man named Jack Gilbert. I love that. Who doesn't love a book that starts out once upon a time? There was a man named Jack Gilbert who was not related to me, unfortunately for me. Jack Gilbert was a great poet, but if you've never heard of him, don't worry about it. It's not your fault. He never much cared about being known. But I knew about him, and I loved him dearly from a respectful distance, so let me tell you. Jack Gilbert was born in Pittsburgh in 1925 and grew up in the midst of that city's smoke, noise, and industry. He worked in factories and steel mills, but was called from an early age to write poetry. He answered the call without hesitation. That's part of it, too. You're going to receive a call to create. It's up to you whether you answer that call. If you don't answer it, it may stick around and come back to you later. It may move on to somebody else, and that's okay, too you'll receive another call to create at some point in your life. He became a poet the way other men become monks. Poetry was his devotional practice, an act of love and a lifelong commitment to the search for grace and transcendence. I think this is probably a very good way to become a poet or to become anything really that calls to your heart and brings you to life. And that's the life revealed part. The more you move into allowing creativity to flow through you, the more you move into allowing that connection to um, all that is or the great whatever, whatever you want to call it, it brings you to life. And then life brings to you everything that you've been looking for. I've got that armpit light thing going on again. My Cyclops armpit. Okay, Jack could have been famous, but he wasn't into it. He had the talent and the charisma for fame, but he never had the interest. His first collection, published in 1962, won the prestigious Yale Younger Poets Prize and was nominated for the Pulitzer. Okay, this guy was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize. What's more, he won over audiences as well as critics, which is not easy. There was something about him that drew people in and kept them captivated. And you know that what that was? That was life radiating through him. One of four. One of five. <laughs> I can hear him coming and going out behind me. He was handsome, passionate, sexy, brilliant on stage. Yeah, we collect essential oils and cats around here. <laughs> He was photographed for Vogue, looking gorgeous and romantic. People were crazy about him. He could have been a rock, sp rock star. Instead, he disappeared. He didn't want to be distracted 
by so much commotion. Later in life, he reported that he had found his fame boring. Boring! He had what poets never have. It's a rare poet that has fame. Maya Angelou comes to mind. Um, it's rare. It's rare, rare, rare. And he found it boring. So lame. Yeah, we do. We understand that, right? Not because it was immoral or corrupting, but it was the same thing every day. I'm so jealous right now. I'm so jealous that you met Maya Angelou. Now you, there's 21 people on here and we're all jealous now. <laughs> ah, so jealous. Jealous, jealous. Okay. So, Jack was looking for something richer, more textured, more varied, which is what we're all looking for. Such a light she was. She kept me going through some very dark times with her poetry. Tall, oh. We're looking for something richer. We're looking for more texture. We're looking for more variety in our lives. Oh, you guys were probably at the same event. So he dropped out. He went to Europe and stayed there for 20 years. He contemplated the eternal mysteries, watched the light change, and wrote, write, wrote his poems in private. He had his love stories, obstacles, victories. He was happy. He got by making a living here and there. Mary Oliver is another one of my favorite poets, come to think of it. He needed little, and he allowed his name to be forgotten. So his creative, his creativity was his spirituality. And fame can become a straitjacket. And we know that. For, we hear that from a lot of people who find fame and then regret it. So he allowed his name to be forgotten. After 20 years, he resurfaced and published another collection of poems. Again, he could have been famous, and again he disappeared for another ten years. His creativity was his spirituality. I, when I used to do the big long list for what I want in a mate, if you have one of those lists, let that go. <laughs> the hundred item list or whatever it is for what you want in a partner, um, spirituality was one of them. And then I meet up with this dude who doesn't appear to have a spiritual bone in his body. And what I learned, have learned from him, is that spirituality can look like repairing a small engine. Spirituality can look like taking in lost dogs and bottle feeding kittens. Um, you don't have to call it a spiritual practice. You don't have to call, um, you don't have to call it anything. But you know when somebody's doing it. You know that. Yes. Men tap into creative forces in different ways than we typically in different ways. Spirituality has no boundaries. It needs no definition. And we can get hung up. Yeah. We can get hung up in what it looks like. And we want other people's form to look like our form. When their form might be repairing an engine, p uh, troubleshooting a problem with the car. Yeah. It could look like riding a four-wheeler through the forest. It could look like fishing. Oh, God. Uh, my husband lives on Top Ramen and Mountain Dew. <laughs> Not me. Okay, so be careful in defining what you think other peer, people's spiritual practice lo needs to look like. Or should, should look like. Don't should on anybody. Oh, I know, it's the worst. Mountain Dew's the worst. He might as well be drinking antifreeze. Yes, Heath will pick up any lost soul on the planet and give them food and shelter. Yes, don't should on yourself or your friends. And he does. He brings happiness to people. It makes people laugh. He's not perfect. Let's not go that far. 
You know what I mean. Don't define it. Define it for yourself if you need to. <laughs> you guys will get along. You guys will get along just fine. I know you would. We'll meet. We'll all meet. Okay. He disappeared for 10 more years. He never promoted himself at all. In one of the few interviews he gave, Gilbert was asked how he thought his detachment from the publishing world had affected his career, and he laughed and said, I suppose it's been fatal. But it never was. You see, he didn't worry about a website. He didn't have a mailing list. That's my grind lately. Uh, he didn't do a seven-step sales funnel. He didn't market himself at all. He put his work out in the world and let it take care of itself. He let life reveal itself to him. He passed that back out to the world. He did without doing. It was pure. It was his pure expression. Me too. This is such a great book. Okay, that's what I want you to hear in that. He could have been, he was like a rare orchid with blooms separated by many years. He never promoted himself in the least. He never once promoted himself, as far as we know. He didn't promote himself. And in fact, when he got over-promoted, he disappeared. Okay, the only reason I ever heard of Jack Gilbert was that late in life, he returned to America and took a temporary teaching position in the creative writing department at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. The following year, 2005, I took the same job. Around campus, they started calling it the Gilbert Chair, because her name's Gilbert too, right? I found Jack Gilbert's books in my office, the office that had once been his. How ironic. It was almost like the room was still warm from his presence. I read his poems and was overcome by their grandeur, by how much his writing reminded me of Whitman. We must risk delight, he wrote. We must have the stubbornness to accept our gladness in the ruthless furnace of this world. Listen to that. We must have the stubbornness to accept our gladness, to reach into our happiness, no matter how uncomfortable, in the ruthless furnace of this world. He and I had the same surname, with the same job, in the same office, taught many of the same students. Maybe. That's a good point. I became deeply curious about him. Students told me he was the most extraordinary man they'd ever met. He'd seem not quite of this world, they said. He seemed to live in a state of uninterrupted marvel, and he encouraged them to do the same. This is important. He didn't teach them how to write poetry, but why? Because of the delight. If you find delight in organizing your sock drawer, that is creativity. It's, yeah, it's perfect. If you find delight... In cleaning your home, and some people do. I know there's one weirdo on this scope that does. <laughs> it's not me. Uh, know your why. Yeah. He didn't teach them how to write poetry. He taught them to access why to write poetry. And then let their own creativity find the poetic form. It's Roseanne. If you want to fold your underwear. Oh, wow, Susan. That's awesome. Okay, he told them they must live their most creative lives as a means of fighting back against the ruthless furnace of the world. The world would burn, your, burn you up. Seeking approval will set you on fire. Worrying about what other people think about you will burn you to ash. Tidying is fun. Yes. Cleaning is not fun. Okay, if you let it the pursuit of fame, the pursuit of approval, the pursuit of um, recognition will kill you. And it definitely will kill your creativity. Mowing grass is creative and peaceful and meditative. Why are you laughing? Huh? Break on through to the other side. <laughs> yes, high is good. Okay. 
Most of all, though, he asked his students to be brave. Without bravery, they would never be able to realize the vaulting scope of their own capacities. Without bravery, you do have to be brave to do this. They would never know the world as richly as it longs to be known. Without bravery, the, bravery their lives would remain small. Far smaller than they probably wanted their lives to be. I never met Jack Gilbert myself, and now he's gone. He passed away in 2012. I probably could have made it my personal mission to seek him out and meet him while he was living, but I never really wanted to. Experience has taught me to be careful of meeting my heroes in person. It can be terribly disappointing. Anyway, I quite like the way he lived inside my imagination as a massive, powerful presence. I decided to know him only through my imagination, and that's where he remains for me, still alive, completely internalized, almost as though I dreamed him up, but I will never forget what the real Jack Gilbert told somebody else, an actual flesh-and-blood person, a shy University of Tennessee student. This young woman recounted to me that one afternoon after class, Jack had taken her aside. He complimented her work and then asked what she wanted to do with her life. Yeah. Hesitantly, she said perhaps she wanted to be a writer. He smiled at the girl with infinite compassion and asked this question, these questions. Do you have the courage? Do you have the courage to bring forth the work into the world? The treasures that are hidden inside of you are hoping that you'll say yes. Do you have the courage? Do you have the courage to bring forth this work, your work, the work that the infinite has given you, yourself, personally, if you're not attached to the outcome, to express in this world, whatever that is. The treasures that are hidden inside of you right now, all of you, yes, you have them. Put your valor oil on. Detach from the outcome. Ask yourself these questions, though. Like, seriously. Ask yourself. The treasures that are hidden inside of you are hoping that you will say yes. They're hoping. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Take a really big deep breath. Exhale it. Ask yourself those honest questions because you know what? You do. I know you do. If you don't have it, we'll help you find it. If you don't have the courage, you can borrow mine. I've got a lot and I'll share it with you. <laughs> and you can tap into it whenever you want. Courage. <laughs> well, you let me borrow your faith, so... Okay. Ah, that was a good chapter. That's just the first chapter. That's not even the first chapter. Well, kind of. Okay, let's read Creative Living Defined. And then we'll read part of... Yes, okay, we'll read two more sections. Ah, I'm so glad you're here. Am I following you already? I am now. Hold on, you guys. Welcome to our little um, enclave of creative people. So this is tons of creative people. Creative living defined. Whoop, whoop. Okay. So this, I believe, is a central question upon which all creative living hinges what we just said. Good morning. Or, yeah, the best Sunday morning ever. Do you have the courage to bring forth the treasures that are hidden within you? Okay. Look. Here's what she says. Not to be confused with Buick, because we're not a bunch of old ladies driving no Buick. And apologies to you if you have a Buick, because now I feel bad. Maybe somebody has a Buick. <laughs> Whoops. We're not driving the old lady Buicks, because we're not old ladies. We're fancy crones. Can I call myself a crone yet? I turned 50 in November. Does that count? When, when can I officially call myself a crone? 
Not a Buick Enclave. Oh, actually, I did test drive an Enclave and I didn't like it. At 50! November, I can call myself a crone. You guys, I can't wait for my 50th birthday. I'm so excited about it. I'm more excited about my 50th birthday than I was about my 21st birthday. Which I wasn't super excited about because I was pregnant at the time, so I couldn't drink. <laughs> We're not old ladies. We're fancy crones. Never! Pass through menopause. I'll be a grown-up. I'll get to be a grown-up in November. Okay. I don't know what's hidden within you. Yay, 52! I'm so excited to be 50. Nina can't wait for 60. It's just Life's just getting easier and easier. No one expects things from you anymore. It's great. Ah! You've been a crone for a while. Six, 60 already. 40! I hated 40. I liked 41, though. Okay. I don't know what's hidden inside of you. I don't. I have no way of knowing such a thing. You yourself may barely know, although I suspect you've caught glimpses. We have guys on here. I know at least one if you're still here, Ben. But there's guys that watch replays, and there's guys on the web. What is the guy version of a crone? What's the dude crone? The crone dude. What's that? I suspect you've caught glimpses of the treasures hidden inside of you. I don't know your capacities. I don't know your aspirations, your longings. But I know surely something wonderful is sheltered inside of you. And I say this with all confidence because I happen to believe we are all walking repositories of buried treasure. We are all walking repositories of buried treasure. I don't know either. Wise man? Sage? I don't know what the boy version is. We are all walking repositories of treasures. I can't. Well, I'll do an oil scope that might help later. That's a sage, maybe? Yeah, okay. The universe buries... Oh, okay, here we go. I believe this is one of the oldest and most generous tricks the universe plays on us human beings, both for its own amusement and for ours. The universe buries strange jewels deep within us all and then stands back to see if we can find them. How's that? The universe buries strange jewels deep within us and then stands back to see if we can find them. It's a mean trick. You know what? Sometimes it makes us have to ask each other for help. I do too. The hunt to uncover those jewels, that is creative living. The hunt to uncover those strange, beautiful, hidden jewels is creative living. That is your life. The hunt to uncover the strange jewels hidden inside of you. Yes. Yes. We're on page eight. I'm taking this book slow uh, because every page almost has something powerful on it. Okay, the courage to go on that hunt in the first place. That's what separates a mundane existence from a more enchanted one. Do you want a mundane existence or do you want an enchanted existence? My opinion is that we're on here, all of us are living to some degree we are living some degree of an enchanted life already. Otherwise, I don't think we'd be here all together. Every word in that book is deliberate and dripping with poetry. Yes. Yes. Enchanted. 
Enchanté. <laughs> okay. The courage to go on that hunt. Oh, man. Hero, chief, magician, medicine, medicine man, saint, true dot. <laughs> okay. Enchanté. The hunt to uncover those drills is creative living. The courage to go on the hunt in the first place. I tell people who come through my workshop, it takes a lot of balls. It takes a lot of courage. Because we dig around and find those jewels. We dig and dig and poke and dig until we can find those jewels. And it's not easy. And it takes guts. Lady balls, maybe. Encourage. <laughs> it takes a fire within. But going digging separates mundane from enchanted, and the often surprising results of the hunt is what she's calling big magic. When you find that stuff within you, when you clear away all the crap that's covering it up, what you find is your reservoir of big magic and you can start to express that out in the world then you can allow it to come forward you don't have to go looking for it it's right there in your gut it's right there in your heart it's right there in your throat if you're having throat problems you need to start speaking it out it's right there in your head it's at the base of your tailbone it's in your sexual organs it's in your solar plexus it will present itself to you. You don't have to go find your purpose. You don't have to go. <laughs> you don't have to go digging around or have take a class, have somebody tell you what your purpose is. It will reveal itself to you when you start asking these questions and when you start picking apart the stories that have kept you from knowing it so far. Then you slip right into an enchanted life you don't even realize it's happening. What you do know is that you feel really fucking good. And the people around you comment on it. And the people around you ask, yeah, yes. You dance like you've got diamond at the meeting of your thighs, Miss Maya Angelo. You know the secret of the life. You know the secret of the big life, the life with the big L. So good. So good. Uh, uh, good. Okay. I'm going to stop there. <coughs> I know this is not a skimmable book. So if you're following along, feel free to drop in every other day as we go through it. Um, I, how I do it is I read it, and then as I think of stuff, I blab it out, and then we read some more, and then I blab some more, and we have a conversation. So we're going to stop on page 8. Because this book is so loaded. Uh, if you have never read, I don't know how this would be possible, but if you've never read Maya Angelou's poem, Phenomenal Woman, please read it. If you love a phenomenal woman, please read it. She is an amazing, powerful... It's most awesome, sis, how she do. I'm glad you joined us. I'm so glad. I'm so glad we have a group going through this book together um, so that we can all use this. The point is to read it and go out and use it. So take what we read today and start asking yourself, where are the jewels inside me? What have I covered them up with? What story did somebody tell me um, that says I don't have any creativity? What was I doing as a kid that I could do for hours? Sometimes you have to go all the way back to childhood to figure out what were you doing as a kid when you had free time? It's in the Perry Fam group, Cindy. CaddyShackDesigns.com is where you can find more about me. Yes, when time stops, when you're in that flow. Uh, I will... Oh, there's a link. I'll post a link. Oh, it's on my Facebook page. Hold on. Hold the phone. Hold on. 
here's my Facebook page and the link if you scroll down you'll see a link for Big Magic and you can friend me and you can always unfriend me I don't take it personal just keep swimming just keep swimming 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 I think oh Tanya is becoming my business consultant that's a brilliant idea I hadn't even thought of it find me facebook.com Elm Michelle Wolf as soon as we're done here I'm gonna do an oil scope then I will go put the big magic link on the website on the front page over to the right in the widgets widget is that not a fun word to say widget uh, add link to website duh jeez jeez okay so facebook.com forward slash L Michelle Wolf that's where you can find me on Facebook my website though is caddyshackdesigns.com please feel free to find me on Facebook either way either way thank you ladies um, this okay so what I want to point out to you before we wrap up what just happened between Tanya and I is how life reveals itself when you're in alignment okay so this is happening to me all day long where somebody comes to me and says hey if you do this you can make a little more money it looks like chump change but it adds up over time nice I'll give you a percentage um, this is it this is creativity in action the more in alignment I am the more people just toss things my direction that lead to abundance okay so that's what it looks like I just will put the link up there that will make me a teeny bit of money that's abundance that is life revealing itself to me in action you just saw it right here live brought to you by CaddyShackDesigns.com you're welcome better wear your sunglasses <laughs> that's how it happens that's what it looks like it's little things that add up love you have a great day amen sister amen brother hallelujah Jeebus Allah Buddha it's a miracle Okay, that's how it happens it all adds up it all adds up it's little things people expect that when they're in alignment and they're searching for prosperity yes and Tanya pointed out to us last week that you guys can go through that link and anything you buy through that link supports this periscoping I will as soon as I'm off the phone I will get to you Angel Rose what beautiful handle I have a cat named Ginger Rose. She is also beautiful. That's how it happens. Life reveals itself in these little ways that add up. Uh, people are expecting paparazzi. And when they get handed a little small thing, they're like, oh, this isn't it, is it? Uh, Michelle... Which one feels like your real, real name? Your real, real, real name? Or both? Vanessa Angel Rose. Magical money. Oh, she's still looking for the bag of money. Can we call you Vanessa Angel Rose? Because they're all pretty. Each small thing is another ripple in the giant pond, baby. Yes. <laughs> Great. Okay, so look for the little things and then go, oh my God, that's awesome. I'm in alignment. Oh, these beads. This was made by Linda, who makes malas. And here's another quick promo <laughs> uh, bracelets that you can put your oil on. I'll talk about this bracelet on the oil scope. 
but she makes these malas here. I think this was her first one. I feel super, super honored to be the recipient of it. Um, Divinita Designs on Etsy. Etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash Divinita Designs. D-I-V-I-N-I-T-A Designs dot com. Or, uh, no. Etsy.com slash shop slash Divinita Designs. Okay, my lovely, beautiful, awesome sauce, men's and women's. I'm going to go and I'll be right back in about 10 minutes to talk about Valor, which has to do with courage. Please put your website up. Vanessa Angel Rose, she designs jewelry and greeting cards. So I'm going to wait two seconds and let uh, her put her website up. We have a lot of creativity in this group. A lot what? Good Lord. Okay. Okay. Friend me on Facebook. We missed you too. Where have you been? I'll be right back in 10 minutes. This is Liquid Courage. It goes with our thing. It's twenty four seventy five wholesale. Okay. Mwah. Be right back. Sweet. Love you guys. Be right back. <laughs> 